We need everyone to stop the foul attack out of the elves. Uh, raiding the most scummiest piece of shit in all of Black Clover, at least with uh, royalty. And it's like, man, don't you just wish that some people, it's like, out of everyone that got killed, like killed and all that, out, Julius and all these other members, these poor guards, wow, you kind of want these, like, piece of shit, like, um, uh, assholes like the king and all that. He's like, oh, what are you doing, Vought family? How could you? Like, you know, my ears have caught in wind at your kin and all that during a royal selection exam is suspected of being a traitor. What do you have to say about Langris, right? And it's like, oh, no, but how dear little Langris, he never did a thing like that. He has no reason to be. There must be something in all that. He's just like, oh, no. Fuck that, as like Langrus is literally diving in Dragon Ball style. He's like, I'm now about to take care of this shit right now. And one thing to mention as well about this and all that, I cannot allow my uh, uh, blood relatives and all that, like, just to be like on there. It's like, you know, I cannot allow any of my blood relatives to become a bride to such a family. How could they? And one thing that you see is the girl that was supposed to get engaged to Finral, which was like, he's like, you know, Grand Uncle, please, like, pardon Lord Langris and Lord Finral, please spare them the harsh punishment and all that. And it was like, look, uh, King, right now, and I was like, oh, so I think, you know, if Finral comes in here trying to save her girl, I was like, you know, I think he might get a couple of brownie points with that girl because this is the only one that, you know, he seemingly has kind of... Even though he's a flirting piece of shit and he's, like, uh, all into the harem kind of stuff, this is the one girl that, like, even as well with the anime, you see, like, oh, he actually has, like, maybe a little thing for, like, um, Vanessa. And I kind of like that it was even shown as well that Vanessa has a thing for um, Yami a little bit. And it was like, no, like, th this is the one girl that kind of, like, at least what we've seen in it always been interpreted that, like, Vinral has actually kind of given a shit about a little bit or, like, shown the more real side of him and he's like what are you doing like on there but it was a nice little thing where i caught off the panel i was like oh it's her and all that because like i thought that was a nice little interesting person and we get to see obviously um i believe that is um Lang langris's mom because obviously they're half brothers which was something that was pointed as well last chapter which as well i like to point out is like oh, obviously that was something where it was like I kind of very foolishly said, oh, well, how come, like, Fenrir didn't transform and all that? And it's like, well, because they were half-brothers, I know, obviously, this could still be a thing, regardless of the map. It's still, it was something they wanted to be clear up, so especially to all of you commenters and the people there that are doing a better job than me, I, I want to give you guys credit, especially that, because you're the guys that pointed it out, and I was like, yep, yeah, no, that was my fuck-up on that part, so... I will take that, I will take that L when it's deserved, right on the forehead, because, you know, you guys pointed it out, and it was something I clearly forgot about, so, humbly appreciate you guys actually pointing that out, but one thing that was interesting as well, is that there is another Royal Knight, like, or at least a kind of Magic Knight squad around there, and they are the Royal Guards, they are the people that we get to see, like, who are actually appointed and special they're not part of any of the members they're not golden dawn they're not any of the others which interesting enough we see like all those people all those golden dawn members come flying in all those about 14 of them and like you see that the main dude is like why are you here gathered here golden dawn and all that we castle knights are tasked protect uh, protecting them Go your your job is to protect you know the citizens and like the king and the dead you know dead around there it's our job to protect the king like what i was like well, look we got something to sell with the humans inside this castle. And he's just like, even if you want to do that like that, you know, living in the corner of the free great royal families, we cannot allow you to enter. So clearly it is, um, I believe it's, th uh, like from how it is, I believe it's Thinral's family. Uh, I, I, Cause I forget like the, with the royalty in this um, series and all that, like generally where they talk about the free great royal families and all that, I'm thinking like, like, Obviously, we know about, like, not, uh, you know, Nozzle. We know about, like, you know, um, Sil uh, the Silver family. We know, obviously, that, like, um, especially with uh, Vermillion. Like, we know about, like, Fogolion. Like, we know about them being royal. But we know that we've seen the three great royal families. And I think maybe they might say Finral's one of the greats on there. Like, um, kind of like how this family, for the most part. Because it's, like, they're clearly trying to set this marriage thing where it's, like, Finral might be slightly related to uh, if, if if things go well to um uh with his uh kind of like granddad buddy he actually wins some brownie points to protecting his girl. That's a scary thought that like you know Finral could technically be one of the lineages that could be 
up for acceptance to, of being king and you're like oh god no that can be a thing but when they're like trying to point this out and all that he's just like oh yeah and all that like what are you gonna do like we need you to stand down fucking languish just grabs like that and he's like oh should i say that uh Ratchley just grinds his fingers into the like the sky itself and just rips a chunk out of the castle door and they're like the attack and all that is a rebellion re arrest them interesting enough one of the people that we thought that was like going to be a serious competitor which was the uh the guy uh, the uh, guy or girl with the glasses who has compass magic i was like what can compass magic really do interesting enough is the ability or seemingly has the ability to redirect abilities because one of the things that we saw immediately was all these like people that attacked them who used like all this stuff with like you know they're firing ice lightning fire poison like they were fighting like all the elements and then when he had this compass magic it all just shot up north so it was like a very interesting uh defensive power it's like this is going to be an interesting character to fight who with people that uses their magic. So it's like clearly this is more a physical kind of brawler effect. This is something like say Jack would deal with, or like Asta, or like people that use more physical combat like uh, than anything else and all that. So when they like they kind of talk as well, whereas like uh, this uh, this one guy with a big pointy nose and chin who kind of really reminds me of the. Uh, the one guy from the Diamond Kingdom that um, Asta fought, that is all Tifana's power. He really reminds me of that dude. We got uh, we got the Compass dude heading over to the right side, and then Langris is heading straight to the middle. So he's like, I'm gonna gouge them dead. As each of them are going for one of the raw, uh, you know, for the three families, they're pretty much going out to attack there, and it's just like. Wow, we need to go in here now. As like Finrol's like, okay, no, Langris did that. We know what's going on. Straight up, all right, Yami, let's go. Like he can't. He gets like the big full picture. He's like, no, I understand this, Captain. It, we need to go and take care of this now. And he's just no, no bitching, no moaning. Like Finrol, being a man, just like I, right, I understand this. We need to do this right now. Yami goes in there, and mm, it's not looking good. There's like four of them out there right now, and even Yam's like, shit, <laughs> fuck, four Golden Dawn guys. Then mm, this one's gonna be a little tricky right now, and it's just like that. No, and then no matter, and then straight up, my boy Jack coming in where he's like, ha -ha, let's have some fun, will we? Like I just thought, and I'm like, man, we hadn't seen you in a while. Like that last time you did something cool was literally against Lee, and I was like. This is what I want to see. I want to see this motherfucker like pull some shit because again, he's some Kempachi looking motherfucker like pull it out and like his magic is straight. I caught people. That's all I do. It's simple laws and physics. Like let me just take care of that. And it's like especially I want to give like um especially with this chapter some fucking kudos to the art because there was some crazy ass looking shit with this chapter when Jack was like doing all these like really so real kudos to um, Yuki Tabata with this one because I love some of the expressions that were being done on Jack on this one it was always great it really re and again it always goes back to Hungry Joker with me it's because he does the nasty Yasu kind of like and that's the character of that he does these really creepy expressions and the same thing with that dude uh, in the uh, witch arc as well who just had that kind of exception. It's like I love the chaos just in the face. It's like very demonic as he just goes and he's like, "All right, not a single one of you humans are gonna be left alive." There's like this elemental dude, this wind man, like, and this war dude just all go attack. One that has like a very similar power to Mars, who's like makes this kind of golem around himself, and like Jack's like, "All right, slash magic death side, let's go on there." And he's like. You're not going to be able to do anything. You can't cut me with that kind of power. Even the army's like, shit, man. This is gonna be. This is the captain's having the hard time about this. And it's just like, and like immediately, Yami's like, you know, how about you just cut that out? You know, your long ass weirdo and all that. And he's just like, you know, you need to actually cut loose now. And he's like, uh, guess you're right. All right. And there's this really creepy, like, blacked out face of him where it's just like slash magic death scythe. He's like, you're doing the same shit again. What are you doing? And then, boom, one horizontal uh, cut. There's just this white panned out face of him like that. Big creepy smirk. And then just his tongue out, like, going crazy. And he's just like, yeah, 
by the way, I have the one spell, and I, I like his ability, which seems nutty. Whereas, like, while while we're fighting, I've adjusted my blade's properties to match an enemy's magic, so he's able to seemingly nullify a person's magic. Like, the more he fights with an opponent, the more, like, his blade just get used to any kind of defensive maneuver, and he's just able to deal, uh, deal with it. He's like, there is nothing I can't cut. Now, let's see what real cutting's like. As like, I'm happy. We get to see some Jack... Uh, like, we get to see Jack the Ripper now, and hopefully we find out a little bit more about why he's a psychotic asshole. Like, what's his... I want to know about him, and it's something we've mentioned before. I want to see more about these captains, because... We spent so much time with, uh, you know, Melody Leona. We spent so much time with, uh, like, you know, well, at least we spent a good a majority more with Nozzle. We know about him. We know about, you know, obviously with the Golden Dawn. We know about those guys. And it's like, give me some of the guys that haven't really, like, Charlotte has had her moment. Like, it's time, like, Jack and, like, that other weirdo. And, like, even we've had tiny moments with the Purple Orcas. It has been Jack and literally the other girl. Like, I forget her name, but she's Shriek from Berserk. That's all she is. She looks exactly like that. And it's interesting enough, guess where a lot of, like, inspiration Yuki Tabata got from. He actually got a lot of his uh, design inspirations from Berserk. So you see that with that little girl. She's Shriek. You see as well with the Golden Dawn member, like, that with William. That's Griffith in his, like, helmet. That That's where he literally got the design from. And I think that's a very interesting thing. I think it... I think it was like not a jump fester interview, but it was one of the interviews that he talked about this where he's like, I fucking love Berserk. And I'm like, that's a good fucking man right there. You know, you appreciate it. And he's like taking some of the aesthetic on there. And he's like, obviously, no, there's there no Berserk. Like, I'm, I'm not. Berserk's my fucking favorite. I love it. Like, I absolutely adore the series. But I appreciate an author that's like, I have massive respect for that guy. And I wish I could do shit like that someday. And it's like, even if it's just like, references and just little ca character nods here and there and all that he just wants to show appreciate some love to that berserk and i'm like good man good man as long as you, as long as you just keep the hustle real with appreciating it that's all that's all we ask for that's all we ask for a little bit of berserk here and there just a little snidget on there but no definitely i think it's a guy i wanted i want to see jack and it's a shame because like I think Jack would be really fun to play in Quartet Knights, or at least in a fighting game, where it's just like he has the. I, I'm thinking of more into. I'm thinking of fighters. I'm thinking of like Dragon Ball. I'm thinking of Sol. Even if there was a 3D one like Soul Cow, like. Or even like if they are like more like traditional Street Fighter kind of thing on there. I feel like he would have a very nice, like, kind of like horizontal slash that you'd be able to do. Like. I'm thinking Third Strike Yang, where he has like the slash 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 conversion or something in there. Like for all my Street Fighter people, who people, everyone who who plays fighting games know exactly what kind of thing I'm talking about. Or he just has like little con conversion, or even if it's like say Yamcha, where he has like you know he goes into slash slash or Tien convert into the volleyball fist, like. He just has stuff like that. Like, I feel like he could do some really cool stuff on there. He had a deflect. He had a counter on um, there that he would be able to do. Like just this kind of stuff on there. So overall, this was definitely a um, really uh, enjoyable chapter for me. I think there were some really nice moments. Uh, Fimbrel's girls uh, now being involved there. And we obviously know more reasons why the fucking Langris and Fimbrel's family are piece of shit because they are trying. They are fucking thirsty for power so much so it's like yo langris we don't give a fuck that girl is ill you need you need that because that means we get closer to being royalty like proper royalty like and all that fuck that we getting close to the king we're nobles and we're we're good royalty we're already deep in there but we need to get further and now we know the fact that like there's at least this compass motherfucker there's this long nosed dude and we know Langris or uh, Ratchley are uh, all roaming around right now and the only people that we've seen so far which seemingly is going to be like a cat or a captain or at least a person going through each door where we know Yami's going to be dealing with one of these guys we're going to be seeing as well that probably Jack is going to deal with the other and overall we're going to be seeing a lot more but I'm glad again this chapter was like okay it's Jack's time to shine and this is Jack's ability where it's like yeah he has like a pretty just you know simple power it's just I can just make this giant blade across my wrist but he has the very terrifying ability of 
I keep fighting people. I, again, that's a Kenpachi thing, where it's like, Kenpachi against Noyatora, he just got used to fighting him, and he's like, I can fight, I can cut him now. That is generally what that is, and it, like, uh, when I see him, and it's like, again, he's like, it is Noyatora and Kenpachi had a love baby, and this is the crazy little psycho bastard that we got, and I love him. I, I just love him for being that weirdo. It's just like, Everyone else is stuck up pricks, or your Yami who just don't give a fuck in there, or you're like, or you're just like Charlotte, where you're like really just like, I try to hide my true self in this like, uh, but no, deep down she she loved that Yami too much, and it's like, and then there's just Jack who is just I'm a psycho, and I'm like, that's a nice mix to stubborns like like kind of like a very prideful like uh, nozzle and like Fugolion who's very proud and like it's like. No, let's just have a psycho and like let's have a dickhead in there with um, the purple orca former captain. And it's like let's get all these kind of weirdos involved in here and all that. And like obviously the Azure deer who's just I'm just a I'm just a happy kid like out of all of them. So I want to see more of them and all that. So let me know you guys thought about this Black Clover chapter down below. What you thought about this one? I thought this was quite a very entertaining chapter, mainly for the fact that we got some of that uh, nice little. Um, tidbits here and there if you've been kind of paying attention especially now we know what we're going to be dealing with i felt the compass guys magic was interesting uh it's definitely going to be a weird power to face against where it's like mm, how do you deal with him just able to change the magnetism of spells really or at least he's able to somehow adjust it to west north south of east so like do you have to manipulate a spell to a to a different direction and then predict that he's going to change it like and how like this is going to be interesting to see how they're going to be dealing with that but that's all me thank you as always for watching i'll see you guys though next time